my feelings were formed by my travels and my exposure to a lot of uh, things going on in the world. And I knew that the women's movement was a big part of that. I was living in Portland. I was working in the Attorney General's office. I felt I could get something done and it sounded like a, a fun way to do it to run for a delegate to the National Convention. I met in the process a number of wonderful, remarkable women. Linda Smith Dyer uh, became a good friend. Cynthia Murray Bellavo, still a very good friend today. Uh, Lois Rackett, uh, Kate McQueen, uh, so many others. Merle Nelson, who was then in the legislature and was a delegate to the National Conference. Uh, Lillian O'Brien, uh, who uh, was recently was a, a colleague of mine in the legislature. Harriet Crane from Rockland, Renee Talbot from Portland was the youngest member. I think she was only 19 at the time. And we had a uh, you know issues program, an agenda. We heard remarkable speakers. We heard Betty Ford. We heard Bella Abzug, um, Barbara Jordan, who was just incredible. You know, not making a difference is a thing we cannot afford. And that's how we felt. We've got to be part of the solution. I was on the board of the Maine Civil Liberties Union, and I was also in the Attorney General's office. I was the first and only woman in the criminal division there. It was a lonely existence for a time, but uh, I used those two roles to help put on a, uh, a chair, a statewide women's conference, I think in the spring of 1978. We had hundreds of women to talk all day long about women's issues in Maine and to see how we could bring the suggestions, proposals, ideas from Houston uh, and find fertile ground in Maine for those ideas. Well, we had a really good response, just tremendous energy. So I think the Maine Women's Lobby built on that energy, and within a few months later, uh, Linda and Lois and Kate McQueen, Cynthia Murray Bellavel, and I uh, started talking about putting together a lobby organization. We had a long brainstorming session at my apartment in Portland one day. We wanted to have dues so we could raise a little money. We didn't want to make it too much, not to deter a lot of good people from joining. So we settled on $2 for dues. <laughs> we, we realized a little while later that that wasn't going to be quite enough money to hire somebody even seasonally to uh, represent us in the legislature. And Helen Reddy was planning to do a concert in Portland. You know. I am woman, and we had a lovely reception after the concert in one of the function rooms of the Civic Center. We raised quite a bit of money at that time. You know, it was quite a bit of money, probably under a thousand really, but for that it was enough to help hire a lobbyist. It, it is, as I understand, the longest existing such women's lobby organization in the country. It's got history to it now. So, and we've had lobbyists, uh, uh, Mary Herman, Vendine Vafiatis, uh, Joanne D'Archangelo, people have gone on to do terrific things uh, elsewhere in government and outside of government. So it has a lot of prestige because of that history, and it has prestige because uh, it's got a place in the hall, uh, and they provide really good information. The lobby with the research arm that we have, and the interns, uh, and the facilities provides excellent, credible information about specific bills. So they're listened to, but it isn't just a handful of women anymore. It's up to a third, sometimes a half of the Senate. It's up to a third of the House uh, of Representatives. We're getting there, you know, not all the way, but it makes a difference when women are listening to women.